And so on the sixth day, God makes man in his image. And it is by absolutely no mistake that on the sixth day, God (laughs) re-establishes man in his image. And then it gets even better. On the seventh day of creation, God rests. (laughs) What's Jesus doing in the tomb? (laughs) He is resting. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Living Fullness. I'm Stina Constantine and joining me on the podcast is Father Sean Burns. Each week you'll hear us chat about a range of topics from virtue to relationships, comments on cultural shifts and lessons we're learning as we get along. So we're so excited to have you join us. Sit back and enjoy being part of a conversation with a couple of friends. Hi Stina, how are you going? Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. That's the way. Uh, today, what have we got today? Today's episode. Today's episode is on Good Friday. Uh, so we're going to be looking at what Good Friday is. We're going to be looking at uh, why it's called Good Friday. We'll have a look at some of the aspects of Good Friday as well. So it's going to be very exciting. I thought we'd start by looking at the agony in the garden because the agony in the garden. Like when we think about Good Friday, the highlight of Good Friday, the main part of Good Friday, is the crucifixion. And yeah, rightly, yeah. rightly, mm-hmm. but. I think the agony in the garden sometimes gets overlooked as just the beginning part of Christ's passion, and then it gets intensive, sort of intensively worse as time goes on. There's an author, one of my favourite authors, as the entire world knows, who's been listening to this podcast, <laughs> a fellow by the name of hmm. Romano Gardini. <laughs> no <laughs> way. I think one day we'll be a saint. Uh, <laughs> and he indicates that, in fact, the agony was the hardest moment of the passion. Yeah, yeah. And then things got progressively easier after that. Mm, easier. E- easier, <laughs> in a manner of speaking. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was kind of, without taking away from the insanity of what, what, what the passion mm-hmm, was, mm-hmm. it was kind of all downhill from that moment. Mm. And so the agony in the garden, Romano Gardini talks about it as the most isolating moment of Christ's passion. Yeah, he talks about the disciples, the way that they fall asleep as he is in this moment of absolute just terror and heartfelt deep sadness. Like he's and he's so anxious that he's sweating blood, and the disciples are off sleeping. Mm. And he says it's almost understandable. Like there's this 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 radical loneliness that Christ is exhibiting, this radical isolation, this radical anxiety. And it's almost like they can't bear it. And he likens it to a child who's watching the adults go through some awful tragedy and the child just goes off and plays or goes off and sleeps or goes off and does something Mm. because they can't comprehend what's going on over here. Mm. And so he he sort of indicates, look, this this was the moment of the most profound isolation for Christ because this was the moment in which he drunk into himself all of the darkness and sin and suffering of past, present, and future. This was the moment in which he fixed his human will completely and totally and utterly, despite the natural desire to keep living, he fixed it completely and totally and utterly on fulfilling the Father's will. Uh, And despite the aversion that he had to all that darkness and all that all that awfulness. And Romano Gardini makes the point, you know, we can only begin to really meditate on the agony in the garden when we're willing to accept that the content of that darkness, of that sin, of that suffering, was in some way, shape or form contributed to by each and every one of us. Yeah. That, that, that my sins form part of that terrifying chalice that he asks his father about. May this chalice pass from me. And so you you really do get the sense that this is the moment that Jesus is just the most anxious that he'll ever be in his life. You know, just coming face to face with sin and darkness and wickedness and yet perfectly saying, yes, Father, Mm. yes, on the basis that we are lovable, mm. which is just incredible. Mm. You know, like all of that he said yes to, to fulfill righteousness, to be sure, but also because God so loved the world. Mm. You know, that kind of leads us to an interesting question, which is, all right, he's he's enduring this, this, this awfulness. He's drinking this all into himself. 
and and he accepts this chalice, and now he's about to go forward and and die on this Good Friday. But why a Friday? Like, is it just? Could it have been a Thursday? Right. Could it have been like like? Could it have been if 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 things had been different? Could it have been a Good Wednesday? Mm-hmm. Like like mm-hmm. why why Friday of all days? Mm-hmm. And for this, we go all the way back to the Book of Genesis. And if you remember in the the creation story, God makes the world in six days and on the seventh day he rests. He starts with, um, you know, the light and the day and the sea and the land and creepy crawlies, which I must admit I feel somewhat mixtured about. (laughs) And, uh, And then he makes the birds and the fish and then the land animals. And then he makes man, makes man in his own image, in his own likeness on the sixth day. Now, if, if we consider the Jewish calendar, the first day on the Jewish calendar was a Sunday. So Sunday is day number one. Day number two, Monday. Day number three, Tuesday. Day number four, Wednesday. Day number five, Thursday. Day number six is Friday. And so on the sixth day, God makes man in his image. And it is by absolutely no mistake that on the sixth day, God (laughs) re-establishes man Mm. in his image. And then it gets even better. On the seventh day of creation, God rests. (laughs) What's Jesus doing in the tomb? (laughs) He's resting. And then we Christians have what we call the eighth day, Mm. the new day dawning the eighth day, which is his resurrection, the day where everything changes. This is why if you go to Rome, you will see a whole lot of octagonal shapes, Mm. and that's representing the the, the eighth day, Mm -hmm. that Christ has made all things new, and there a new day, a new day has dawned. So uh, so the reason he dies on a Friday is that this is the day that man was made, and so it is the day that he is remade. Mm. It's really cool. Mm. It's really cool. So this is the day that he just drinks into himself all of the horror and darkness and blackness of man's sin in order to reestablish him in the order of light. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. So moving to the crucifixion, Mm. what are some of the key points, key moving moments? moments? Moving moments. Yeah. Yeah. Moving moments. Much better phrasing. Yeah. Moving. One of them, it's something that you've spoken about on the podcast before, and it's what happens with Jesus on the cross and the vinegar. And so obviously with Jesus being on the cross, there's a number of prophecies that are fulfilled by the words that he chooses. And one of them is, I thirst. And it sort of reminds us of Psalm 69, 21, where it ends by saying, they gave me vinegar to drink, which is exactly what happens here because the Romans would mix cheap vinegar with gall as a painkiller. So as a way of trying to dull the experience of the people that they were crucifying, they would offer that to them almost as like a a little, a little bit of mercy there for what they have to endure. And so it kind of makes, you know, it, it makes sense even just on a bodily level that Jesus would thirst on the cross when we remember just how much he bled, even just thinking about the agony in the garden, right? He, he bled sweat, like he was, there was blood pouring from him in that in that space. And then from up to the scourging and, you know, everything that happens there, there's blood loss at every every step of the way. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense bodily that he would thirst, but that's not the only reason why he says, I thirst. And so when Jesus is then offered, he's offered vinegar mixed with gall by the Romans, he refuses it. Yeah. So if it was just a bodily thirst, you would imagine – anyone would accept that, but it's not just a bodily thirst for him. And for him to accept that would mean that he would have his senses dulled. That would mean that there would be a little bit less that he would have to suffer. And he's not okay with that at all. He wants to take on all of it for us. So he accepts, he dismisses this mixture that the Romans are offering him. And he wants to fully accept all, every bit of suffering and fully give himself to us. Which I guess is why we have such a thing as a Good Friday, why we call it Good Friday. Jesus took on exactly what we couldn't. We weren't able to take on what was required for us to be united with him to mm-hmm. God. Like we, we just couldn't do it. 
Um, and we talked about this in many previous episodes where we talked about the prophecies of the bridegroom mm. and the, the bridegroom would come and he would unite us. He would wed himself to us and would unite us to his people. Like his people would be united to him, sorry. And everything that he said, like he did. So he, not only like the prophecies from the Old Testament are being fulfilled here, but everything that Jesus said that he would do in his life, he did. He did. It all came true. Yeah including rising from the dead. <laughs> yeah. And I think as Christians we often hear that and go, yeah, 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 we know. Like, yeah, we know. Can we just pause that, like that thought? Can we just pause that for a moment and check in and go, like, hold up. <laughs> hold up. He rose from the dead. He knew he was going to die and he rose from the dead. Like overcame the very thing that, you know, all of creation fears, death. Yeah, yeah. He overcame yeah. that very thing and he did that purely for us. Yep. Out of love. Out of love for us. Yeah. Yeah. We have a God who is so outrageously loving, whose love is is so incredible, outrageous, outlandish, that he would give himself in such a radically vulnerable manner. Yeah. 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 Incredible. And I, I read somewhere in John's gospel today where – you know, we can sometimes think that Jesus is a victim mm. in all of this, but he's so united to God's will yeah. that he actually says at one point in John's gospel, these people are your are my gift from you, God. Like yeah. that like we're we're a gift to him. He doesn't consider us like a burden that we that he has to carry. Yes. No, he actually yes. he loves us not out of obligation as such. Mm. He loves us purely because he wants to love right, us. Right. He becomes instead of a hapless victim, he becomes a willing victim. Yeah. 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 And he is therefore priest and victim. Yes. Because he offers himself. He is both the offerer and the offering. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. Mm, which means that Easter is around the it's corner. It's around the corner, coming <laughs> like a steam train going at 100 Ooh. kilometres an hour. Yeah. So just before we, we get to truth, beauty, goodness, if I can just give a bit of a shout out to all of our listeners, we need your help. It costs to run this podcast between editors and equipment and other stuff. I don't know what's the other stuff that you use. I, I, I clearly <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I mean it is. Yeah, clearly it's the I'm not involved in this stuff. It's so majority of the cost comes from our platforms. The equipments yeah. we've already purchased. So when they have repairs, we need to be able to fix them or buy new equipment. But most of the cost is the platforms that we need to be able to run to keep this podcast going, to be able to create new content. Yeah. Uh, but also our editors as editors, well. Yeah. They need to be paid yeah. fairly. Yeah. So, so that's that's where we're at. We're 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 trying to uh, to make it a manageable project, yeah. and and so we need your help. And any help that you can offer is 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 greatly appreciated. So if you can head over to Patreon, I think the, there's there's a number of tiers there. The lowest tier is five dollars, and goes all the way up to I think there's like seventy five or something. Seventy five dollars, mm. right? So so even if that all that you can contribute is five dollars, hey, that is so awesome. Thank you so much. Every little bit goes a really long way in helping us to maintain the podcast at a high standard. So thank you so much. And for those of you who have already subscribed to Patreon, thank you. Thank you so much for your for your generosity, for your donation. We do want to, to, to give you something extra for that as well. So we've got content for you coming out, which you'll have access to exclusively as our Patreon uh, members. Things like behind the scenes, sort of extra discussions, questions that we might explore that we won't explore on the actual show itself. So there's there's or the podcast itself. So so there's an opportunity to to get some some further formation, some further entertainment, hopefully as well. Yeah. Uh, so um, we do have a couple um, of fun random yeah, things yeah, yeah, exactly, I do. exactly and there'll be some behind the scenes fun stuff as well so please um please join us we'd love to have you with our community yeah and jump over to our socials as well and join our social media either living fullness on instagram or virtue ministry on instagram or virtue ministry on facebook as well to be able to keep up to date about what's happening well that takes us to a truth beauty and goodness then padre mm. so mine's an author <laughs> no <laughs> let me take you guess who could it be well, I was talking to him about him today, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the book you think. Okay. It's Romano Gardini, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a book that he wrote called The Humanity of Christ, 
A Contribution to a Psychology of Jesus. Oh. It's really good. Oh, this is different. It's really, really good. Oh. And, and I know the title sounds a little bit suspect, like it almost sounds like it's trying to make Christ into a, a psychologically human person. Mm. Uh, that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. Mm. It is so good. Pick it up and have a read. Yeah. yeah. I might add that to my list. How about yourself, Stina? Ah, for me, it was um, a conversation that I had more recently. I was up in Sydney and I was staying with a friend of mine uh, and her housemate and my friend was out and I was just hanging out and just reading a book, that kind of thing. So I was sitting out in the living room, reading away and the housemate was walking about and she noticed what I was reading and she just asked about it, like, what what do you, you know, what's it about? And I told her a little bit about what it was about and it was mainly around some spirituality, but also like the counseling space. So more of the therapeutic kind, but also, also spiritual. So she sort of sat there and listened for a bit and then she went away and did a couple of things and she came back a bit later. Um, and she shared about something she was reading and she was sharing about a particular article that someone had written around a very sensitive area of bioethics Mm -hmm. and very controversial and it left me going oh my goodness I can't believe this is being considered like I just I'm so stumped that you know we're at this point and that this is even a thing and so we were having this toing and froing and I just got to a point where I said to her like I just had this like great big sigh and it was just oh and she went you all right it's like it's just this is heavy and she just looked at me like, what? <laughs> I went, it is. Like, I just, I find this so heavy. She went, you're the one sitting there reading like spiritual and healing stuff. Like, how do you mean like that's heavy? That's my kind of heavy. And so we both just sat there and appreciated just how differently we were created and just how different our interests were and how one thing that she finds, you know, easy to read and interesting and light I find heavy and the same vice versa. So just appreciating God's creativity for being able to create, you know, two women who are faithful, who, you know, have lots of similarities, but also some very clear differences. (laughs) That's really cool. That's really cool. Mm. God is absolutely glorious. Yeah. 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 Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Living Fullness. We will catch you again next week, but as always, know of our love and prayers. God bless. God bless.